I think a lot of little girls will uh, make clothes for their dolls. My family is quite artistic. There were always fabrics around and uh, knitting and crochet and embroidery. I have tiny little clothes, but real miniatures, real, with beautiful, beautiful details. And so um, it was a natural progression to um, go to a fashion school. I didn't know textiles existed as a subject of study. It was something you made clothes for your dolls or you made clothes to wear, but you don't study textiles. <laughs> I worked as a fashion designer for 10, 10 11 years. It's all um, the research I was doing when I was a designer. My daughter, Emily, and she's now very interested to become a designer, so I'm keeping all of this for her just in case. So it's, I think it's very, yeah, it's nostalgic. So I'm a specialist in knitwear design. So these are um, knitted swatches. So they're little samples of stitches that can be the basis for a collection of garments. I began uh, working, developing the fibre. Um, but from the development of the fibre, then you have to know how to construct the material. So this is the, the knitted fabric, the fabric constructed. And then you also have to know how to um, make a garment, so the three-dimensional form, so then, then these were transferred into garments and those skills I could then use later as an artist to make the refuge wear sculpture and the body architecture sculptures. There's no physical link, uh, in the sense formal link, but it's this um, um, interest and passion in seeing something develop from the material aspect into a three-dimensional form. Designers working today do have a, a, a much more conceptual approach to designing their collections. But uh, when I was studying, it, uh, we didn't look necessarily for meaning in, in the garment. We looked for the construction, the materiality, the texture, the colour, the shape. Uh, those are not conceptual, those are formal. And then meeting Jorge, there was a gradual shift then from what I was doing as a, a designer um, to the work that became more experimental as an artist. And um, it started, of course, with textiles because that was where my competencies were. But then the garment became the sculpture. So it moved from something quite practical to an object which was much more experimental and related to a particular concept or an issue at the time. We start with a, a sketch like this, and then we begin, that's, this is the ideas on paper for discussion, and then we begin to elaborate the actual artworks that we're going to create. Some have been made, some have not been made, but they're all the um, research ideas. A whole bank of all of these are drawings from different projects. We only survive from our work. <laughs> it's our passion and it's our life. We, um, we produce a lot of the work through commissions uh, with institutions, cultural institutions. And the Amazonia project was commissioned by the Natural History Museum in London. They asked us as artists, how would you respond to the theme of biodiversity? So, so that's what 
provoked us in a sense then to travel to the Amazon and with scientists as well to get a deeper understanding of what's happening in the Amazon, the species, uh, climate change. So this work is uh, very much about um, nature and biodiversity. There's also this cycle of um, life and death, uh, the visible trace of species that have lived before. And we'll um, translate it into different forms, different materials, porcelain, photography. We also have video work and textile work. So, for example, this one is the Lifeguard, the Lifeguard series. The flowers are interpretations of photographs that we took when we were travelling um, in the Amazon and then elsewhere since, um, since this project uh, uh, started. So we've been in Southeast Asia and also in our backyard photographing flowers. And they become drawings, but they also become um, objects, so like these textile flowers. These become the final drawings, the representation of the possible sculpture that we'll be making in the studio. These are the actual habitats themselves. So they relate to um, the body architecture work, which was from the mid 90s as well. But now we're mixing fragments of clothing, the flowers, garments and the gloves. So it becomes a, a kind of a collage, this collage of all the different um, years of collecting fabrics. This, for example, comes from a trip in India. This one comes from a trip in China. And this one comes from a trip, trip in South Africa. So this is a study for a three-dimensional artwork. So it's a two-dimensional study for a three-dimensional sculpture. These flowers here will become the surface of the dwellings and the surface is also covered with fragments of clothing and the gloves and the garments is a, the human presence the glove is symbolic it's the hand the gesture touching out feeling uh, making a communication with and so it reoccurs um, often throughout the works, particularly in, in the textile pieces, of course, because it becomes a very tactile object. You want to touch it and you want to put your hand in, but our work oscillates between um, the very poetical and the functional. In fact, we, we try and find something halfway between that. This project is called Clouds. The clouds are formed with uh, plastic bottles, a direct uh, representation of privatization of water. And um, at the same time, the plastic bottle also becomes a, a serious issue for pollution. So water and waste, polluting, um, privatization, etc. So these are studies for um, the cloud architectures. It's the idea that the work um, creates so as a trigger for more involvement and in a sense uh, a catalyst for people also to take on board the issues and develop them in their own personal way. So we provide a platform to discuss and to experiment visually uh, and in some sense it's also with specialist uh, community. Uh, we started off talking about the issue and then we take that onto a, um, an artistic level in a poetic level and we can bring it back again also back to the community in a very real We've invited the students from the School of Architecture in Versailles to develop uh, their own cloud. So it's been interesting for us to see um, how um, other people interpret the subject. And so we talk about how to develop that process into an artefact, an artefact, an object which 
um, potentially has meaning as well. How do we take the artifact out of uh, a research situation and confront it with the public? These are issues that I'm involved with. But we have also a parallel project, the development of these industrial buildings along the river. So we're in the process of renovating and working together with the local community around to develop a site where artists can come and experiment and investigate um, on different, in different ways, with the environment, with the local community, or with the industrial heritage, with the river, with the nature. Um, so it's a, a long project because these are huge buildings, huge factories. We try to create an artwork which is, has an engagement with society, an engagement with people, so that a real transformation can take place. So on the one hand, there's an object, but the idea of working with the communities and creating a discussion and creating an artwork which can be um, uh, strong in this sense, move people to talk about issues, then we feel our role as artists has been accomplished because we're creating a real discussion and a real change in, in the long-term sense. So we believe in a work that triggers and catalysts people to uh, think differently and act differently. And we can do that through art. Together, we're much stronger than alone because we complement each other in different ways. That allows us to develop these projects on a large scale. If we're working in a small studio uh, painting, we're not going to change the world with that, but we need to have the infrastructure, the buildings, uh, the studios, the mechanisms. If we create a, a village complex, then we can invite other artists to come there collectively, then together, then we have the force to be able to confront society and develop strong messages that have real potential. <laughs>